Well, welcome everyone. Glad that you guys could all come and um, listen in. I think Michael's got some good stuff today. My name's Chris with Fox Ferry Lighting Solutions. And today we are joined by Michael Asmore. Uh, he is a business development and grant special uh, strategist for public safety market. Uh, he's worked with public safety agencies to acquire grant, grant funding for all of their needs. Uh, his company is Dynamic International. Um, he's got about 20 years of experience working in law enforcement, uh, fire departments, and homeland security. Uh, before we get started, though, had a little housekeeping that we should uh, take care of. Um, our presentation today will be about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, we have all the mics turned off for the attendees, um, but if you do have questions, please add them into the uh, chat section. Uh, there's a little button at the bottom center of the screen uh, that you can open that up and put all your questions in there. And we will field those questions uh, probably at the end, maybe um, halfway through. Uh, we'll, if we have some questions, we can um, uh, get the, to those then. Uh, we will be recording this webinar. So uh, we'll send out a, a, uh, the recording and an email later on today. Uh, we definitely encourage you to share it with everyone in your agency, everyone in your department, um, so that um, you know, more people can be more informed and get excited about the, uh, what Michael is offering. Um, we'll also have a uh, webpage where you can get more information, sign up for more information, and be able to contact Michael and us at Fox Ferry. So um, working from Fox Ferry, uh, we do a lot of demos, do a lot of trade shows, meet with a lot of agencies, and we present um, products and solutions, and um, we're pretty excited about them. And a lot of the people who attend them are very excited about them too. Um, and they see how it's going to solve problems for them. They understand how it's going to make their lives better. It's going to, how they can save lives. But they always have that wall that says, wow, this is great, but uh, there's no way we're going to be able to afford these tools. We're not going to be able to afford this stuff because they've got a mindset of what has been, what's, what they have for budget and what they have allocated and they just, they're, you know, they kind of shut down and say, we're not going to be able to do this. So, you know, we've seen this problem and we've seen it over and over and over. And, you know, departments, agencies, they really want to be able to do their jobs better, but they just don't see an answer to it. So that's where we looked uh, outside the box and we got in touch with Michael. Uh, we've been working with him uh, since uh, 2020. And yeah, he comes to the table with about 14 years of developing grants, submitting grants. He has extensive knowledge for federal, state, and private grant sources. He understands how grantors think and what they're looking for. And he understands how to speak to grantors in craft language so you can get results and get the funding you need. Um, but further than that, he also has a big drive to get agencies and departments to visualize what their future could be like if they had access to all the tools they needed to break that status quo of, we only, we only can get this little bit of funding, you know, so we can only do this. And he wants agencies to think bigger and think outside the box and say, what if you could have all the tools you needed to do your jobs? Let's think like that and let's get the funding you need. So with that, let me pass the mic over to Michael and he can uh, talk a little bit more about what, uh, how to get money that you need. Mike? Great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. the opportunity. Um, yeah, what I want to do with you all today is, is really walk you through what I call the grant funding assistance strategy. Um, it is designed uh, to teach a city, county, or state organization who wants to purchase your solution uh, to do five things. One, to get approvals. So I want, uh, there's times where I'll talk to end users and they'll need to sell a project uh, to either leadership or city councils or county boards. Uh, so we're gonna cover that. Then the next thing that we're gonna cover is really identifying um, what specific grants are available. May they be federal, private, or state grants. Uh, and not just this year, but past years too. There are certain grants that you could tap into past year's funding um, easier than you can to even apply for current year. 
Uh, then three, locate the point of contact who oversees the federal, private, or state grants. Uh, I'm a big believer in building rapport with the grantor uh, because if the grantor recognizes the project through your eyes, it's going to take a different meaning than let's say it's just an agency applying for it. Uh, then fourth, build a successful grant justification paper. And then lastly, how to secure and protect the funding so that way it doesn't get spent uh, on another project. So really, let's start off and talk about what is a grant. Now, a grant basically is a sum of money given by an organization, uh, especially a government, for a particular purpose. And there's two parties when it comes to a grant. There's a grantor, and that's the individual that's in charge of distributing the money uh, for a particular purpose. And then the grantee, which is you folks, typically the end user that is looking to uh, receive money for a particular purpose or project. Now, there's three types of grants that I mentioned earlier. There's federal grants, private grants, and state grants. And an example of a federal grant that probably we're really familiar with is the AFG or the Assistant to Firefighters Grant. Uh, if you're in a big city, the UASI Grant, Urban Area Security Initiative, uh, or maybe the State Homeland Security Grant Program. Uh, those are kind of the most well-known ones. Uh, most common state grant, if you're on the law enforcement side, is the Justice Assistance Grant or the JAG Grant or the Burn Grant. Um, there's also a rural firefighter safety grant for fire departments that serve a population of 10,000 or less in their community. Uh, and those typically uh, come from the state. And then there's private grants. And that's an area that I see very rarely tapped. And there's really three different types of private grants. grants private grants from corporations, foundations, or nonprofits. And we're going to dive a little bit deeper into those as we, as we go. Uh, but what I like about those is the private grants typically don't, they're ongoing more often than not. You could apply for one of those grants any time of the year. You don't have to wait for the application to open and close. Um, and the other thing I like about them is private grants go right to your agency more often than not. And they are earmarked for a specific part of your agency. So if your traffic division's looking for it or your hazmat division or your special operations division, that money's actually earmarked toward the department, toward that division. So let's talk about the process of, of a grant. It's, it's two steps, filling out an application, which requires specific city, state or county information writing a justification paper. Um, in the past, <clears throat> they would be um, three to five to seven page papers you'd have to write. Or nowadays, they actually take the application and combine it with the justification and have short answers. So example, you fill out the application, then you would have a question. The question might be, uh, in 500 words or less, tell us about the problem in your community. Uh, so you would take that time and explain what's going on in the community. Uh, then they might say uh, 250 words or less or 300 words or less. Tell us about the project. How is the project going to you know, save time or save money or reduce liability or save lives? And that's when you talk about, in this case, the Fox Fury product offering. And you know, the main thing I want you to keep in mind is when it comes to filling out an application and writing a paper or filling out an application doing short answer, you want to make sure you follow the guidance and application kit. And the guidance and application kit will tell you the rules. So you might have a situation where the guidance and application kit requires you to use a certain type of font or a certain size font. Uh, you might have to re require you to do certain type of spacing. Uh, they might want to know a certain sequence or how you're going to fill out the application. So the main thing I want you to keep in mind is when you're filling out any application, read that guidance and application kit. And in fact, you might want to have one or two or maybe three people read that guidance and application kit. So you don't forget things because if you forget things or don't follow the order, they will disqualify your application. And we never wanna see you have to go through that. So why are grants 
such an important thing to know about nowadays. And, you know, what I've noticed over the years, and I've been in the industry for 20 years, I used to sell tactical gear for six and I've consulted for 14. I see budgets getting smaller and smaller each year. Um, you know, it, it could be the economy from the real estate market, uh, the tax revenue of your community. Um, a majority of your budget money goes to payroll and gasoline. So long story short is these budgets are tight. Over the last decade or so, I've seen more and more elected officials want to have a say on what goods and services the agency purchases. So more often than not, you're having to present to your um, city councils or county boards, we want to work on this project. Um, we want to apply for this funding for this reason. And they want to vote on it. And they'll either vote yes or no. And I'd love to tell you they vote yes or no based on your needs. A lot of times, political philosophies will play a role. And I'm not going picking on Republicans or Democrats or liberals or conservatives or left or right. What I'm usually noticing is if the county board member or the city council member feels that voting on that project is going to hurt their chances of keeping their seats, there's a good chance they're going to vote no. So you always want to keep that in mind. And I keep seeing more and more life-saving products and services for departments that aren't considered as high as a priority due to other needs getting bumped from the budget list. And I always tell businesses, when you are looking to help your customer get a solution, the more reasons they can pull it out of the box, the better chance they're going to be able to get funded. And that's one of the things I do like about Fox Fury is Fox Fury, you can use their lighting for hazmat. You can use their lighting for SWAT. You can use their lighting for traffic investigation. You can, you can do it for scene reconstruction because you never know as an agency when you're going to be called out. You might be called out during the daytime, which is great. But if you're called out in the evening, you're going to need lighting. And, and that's one of the things I really like about Fox Fury is it could be used multiple times for multiple reasons. Now, another reason why I see an issue with, with getting uh, items purchased on budget is the higher cost of the product. The higher price point, the harder it is to get it uh, purchased through a budget. So I always tell end users, and this is something I definitely want to stress to you all today, is when you're working on a project, focus on what it's going to take to get the job done right, to get as many people home safely as possible. You don't want to just say, okay, well, I'll take the bare minimum of lighting as an example, because um, I get told no so much. I doubt I'm going to be able to get this through. Grants are completely different. Grants are all about solving problems. So if you can show how the project's going to solve the problem, the grantor doesn't care if it's a $10,000 light package, a $20,000 light package, or even a $50,000 light package. All they care about is, does the price asked for by the end user solve the problem? And is the problem big enough that we feel we should fund the project? And we're going to go into details in a few slides down the road here about how to build a compelling case. But that's really all they care about. So don't get caught up in the price point. Even though I know you're conditioned because of budgets, you're looking to you know, get as much into the budget as possible. This is a completely different strategy. We'll talk about it in detail soon. So what's the end result? The end result is more often than not what I see in this industry is products getting cut from the budget list each year. And my opinion, local agencies like yourselves must be prepared now more than ever for what's going on in our society. May it be civil unrest, may it be wildland fire fights, may it be hurricanes, uh, may it be whatever, you want to make sure that you're prepared. Because if you're not prepared, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, so to attain this high level needs that you have, now more than ever, budgets and enhancements need to be made through grants because the budget alone is not going to work. So let's take a second and really talk about the purchasing process. 
and why sales opportunities take so long and why opportunities to get funding for projects take so long. You know, I always explain to businesses, you know, they'll reach out to you and you'll, you know, through either the internet, through a media publication, maybe they're at a trade show, maybe they call you up. And then from there, you have a conversation with them. And then from there, they're going to send you product info, maybe a demo. Maybe they'll do a virtual demo like this nowadays. I'm seeing more and more Zoom being used for demos. But then maybe they're going to send you a product for testing and evaluation. Once you determine you like it, they're going to se they'll send you a formal quote. And then you usually have to submit the project, either to your leadership or maybe city councils or county boards to get approval to move forward. And if it doesn't work in the budget, the next thing you're probably going to have to do is you're going to have to, uh, you know, fill out a grant application and then write your justification paper, submit the grant, and then you're awarded the funding. Well, it's a long process. I mean, some of you uh, all have experienced probably six months, a year, two years to get a project funded that at the time you really needed. Because a lot of times I find in this market, usually if you have a need, it's because something happened that identified the fact you really needed it. And it's not always, you know, where you're able to get the solution as quickly as you need it. And the odds are more often than not with budgets, it takes some time through a grant. So that's why I created the grant funding assistance strategy when I used to sell uh, Homeland Security products is I wanted to build a solution. And specifically what I did for Foxfire is I built this solution to do five things. Get approvals, identify available grants, locate points of contact to talk to, build a successful uh, grant justification paper and application and then securing it. So let's talk about the first thing, how to sell projects and how to get approvals. You know, the first thing is this, you got to be clear on who's going to approve this project. So you have to know, okay, do I have to sell this to the chief? Do I have to sell this to the captain? Do I have to sell this to the commander of the division? Um, if it's a city council or a county board, do I have to you know, go and talk to the reps individually? Do I have to go and do a pre presentation to the whole uh, council or, or board members? Uh, is it a regional project? Do I have to get in front of a regional board? Do I have to sell them on the project? Is this a statewide project where maybe I need to go in front of state administrators? You have to get clear on who's going to be making the decision on the project. And also you got to understand why do I have to get these approvals in the first place? And more often than not is taxpayers pay for public uh, safety personnel salaries. So the elected officials feel that they should have a decision since this is a taxpayer project, regardless if it's getting purchased with grants or with budgets, they want to say more than ever. So, you know, so how to get these approvals? As an end user, you must convince and show how this project can be realistically funded through a grant. May it be a federal grant, may it be a state grant, may it be a private grant. You need to make sure that you show how the project's going to be realistically funded. Secondly, you want to show how the project is going to do one of four things. And I'm going to harp on this a couple times through this uh, presentation. You want to show how the project's going to save time how it's gonna save money, how it's gonna reduce liability, how it's gonna save lives. Those are the four key things you wanna show. And pardon me, I gotta turn this off. So once you show those things, that's going to ensure that the approvals will be in place. So when it comes down to it, Fox Fury's product offering, you know, they have a few different solutions. They have area scene lighting for decon. Uh, they have chargers that can be used for area scene lighting. In fact, this is a point where I'm going to share my screen here for, with you folks. So let me take a second here. And I'm going to pull up my presentation because I want you to see these slides. All right, there we go. Let me go on to where I was at. All right, here we go. So... With the Fox Fury lighting solutions, you know, they, they fall into a few different categories. You got your area scene lights. That's going to be for decon lighting. They also make chargers. 
So if you're working on a grant or getting approvals for getting a grant and it has to do with area scene lighting, then Fox Fury has information they can provide for you. They also fit into camera lights. So um, <clears throat> if you're using your cameras, let's say to reconstruct a traffic accident or maybe a light for your drone, they have the ability to amplify your cameras. So that way you can use your cameras in nighttime just as easy during the day. Then they have drone lighting. So, um, you know, that would be an attachment or tool for your drone. Um, if you're working on the EOD side of the house, um, the lighting for a drone can be used with your EOD robot. Um, I'll talking to a lot of uh, um, bomb techs depth perceptions and issues sometimes with their robots. So what they'll do is they'll position the drone in between the robot and the actual device they're looking to diffuse. So you get an idea of how close or how far the arm is to the actual device itself. Uh, upgrades. Uh, so their drone lights qualified to be an upgrade for uh, a, a drone robot. Or if you have a drone and you use it for search and rescue, maybe um, you have a care facility where um, patients might wander off the, facil the facility and they might have dementia or they might have Alzheimer's. This way, you, if it's nighttime, those you could purchase lights to justify using it for search and rescue. And, you know, because it's considered a vehicle attachment tool. Then if you work forensics, they have their forensic lights and lasers they offer. Uh, it's, you know, it's considered an alternate light source. Um, you know, it could be, uh, you know, uh, near infrared, ultraviolet, white lights, it's all considered a light source. So it's used in those instances. If you need to buy their chargers or um, any of their kits, those would qualify also under forensics. Then you got their helmet lights and, hand, and headlamps. So if you have a team that needs lighting on the helmets, may it be firefighters or law enforcement, they offer those. They also offer intrinsically safe per, uh, personal lights. The reason I'm going through all these different categories is you might talk to Fox Ferry about a need for one type of solution, but you might have multiple areas where you could use lighting. Again, it doesn't take any more or any less effort to apply for a grant that's $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 or $50,000. So when you go into your conversations with your Fox Fury rep, talk to them about what do you need in terms of lighting that's going to solve the problem. And think of it that way. I always use the analogy of Santa Claus. You know, I have a 13 year old and 11 year old, but when they were five and seven, they would write a letter to Santa. And believe me, they didn't go bare bones. They wrote everything they could think of they would love to have from Santa Claus. I want you to think in those terms, because if you have enough needs and you can justify it in your grant application, you'll get the funding. It's never about asking for too much. It's asking for what you need to solve the problem. So let's go on here. You got your, your right angle utility lights. May they be lights for handhelds. May they be light amplification optics. Uh, for decon, portable area illuminating lighting, chargers, cases, storage containers for your lighting, the nomads, which I find are, are used commonly on special ops missions or traffic accidents at night because they give you a, a, a variety of light from all different angles. Uh, if you need batteries or replacement batteries or power packs for your lighting, all of that would be covered under, grant, uh, under a grant. It's just all about justifying the project itself. If you have a SWAT team, they have tactical lighting. Um, if you're a SWAT team and you've seen the TED, which is a distraction device that makes noise and lighting um, instead of being a, a flashbang, if you will, that qualifies under grants. If you're a fire department that deals with wildland or structural firefighting, their portable area illuminating lighting also fits under a grant. So as you could see, you know, there's roughly four pages of this presentation that I have here that are going to fall under lighting solutions for, uh, for grant funding. So now let's talk about the grants themselves. 
Now, I've done research and I've identified 31 different federal grants that are available. They fall under FEMA, uh, Governor's Highway Safety Association. You have your Pipeline Hazardous Material Safety and Administration. The Department of Agriculture has grants that Fox Fury's Lighting falls under, DHS, HUD, DOJ. So as you can see here, 31 grants will fall under those seven categories. And if you're at a point where you're gonna need assistance with grant funding, I'll provide you an extensive list of grants. I would say per state, there's anywhere from 100 up to 250 grants per state that I've identified. So private grants, there's over 1,480 grants nationwide. May they be corporate, foundation, or nonprofit grants. Give you some examples. A corporate grant that you're probably familiar with, you might have heard of, is Firehouse Subs. Uh, the Firehouse Sub Sandwich Shop raises funds for public safety projects. Um, they actually have a foundation set up, but when you go to a Firehouse Sub Sandwich Shop, you can either round up your order and the whatever you round it up to goes to the foundation. They have boots in them that you could drop loose change in. And then Firehouse Subs as a business takes a percentage of their proceeds and will fund public safety projects. Common foundation you might have heard of is the Gary Sinise Foundation. Uh, most people know Gary Sinise as Lieutenant Dan from Forrest Gump. Uh, they also know Gary Sinise from uh, uh, CSI New York. He was the lead uh, detective on that show. He has a foundation where he funds projects for military, but uh, individuals that come back from the war, but he also funds projects to, to help agencies. Uh, right now he's done a lot with PPE, but I've seen him fund projects for a variety of causes for different agencies across the country. <clears throat> and then you have nonprofits. And I should say Gary Sinise is more of a nonprofit. A foundation grant would be a good example, um, would be your community. Um, there are almost 700 different community foundations. And if it's near a big city, you know, I'll give you the example of San Diego. San Diego has a community foundation grant that raises money for projects that improve, enhance, or develop the community. Um, and if you upgrade and enhance your law enforcement or fire service capabilities, that is an improvement to the community. So I see projects getting funded through those uh, community foundations. If you're from more of a rural community, they'll take a region of the state and make a foundation. And I like to use the examples of those types of foundations as um, like almost like private equity firms where they have funds and these funds are anywhere from seven to nine figures big. So we're talking millions to hundreds of millions of dollars in these community foundation funds that will fund projects for public safety. Again, I don't expect you to reinvent the wheel. If you have an interest in Fox Fury solutions, let your rep know, he'll let, that let me know, and then we'll get in touch and I'll talk about the specific ones you should target in your community. Then there's state grants and these grants are through your state. You know, and I've surfaced 75 of those. So it might be a community block grant. Um, it might be a crime lab upgrade grant or community, criminal justice or the burn grants or justice assistance grants is known. Um, I see emergency management grants for lighting, uh, emergency medical grants for lighting, fire protection, fire programs fund, forest fire protection, law enforcement grants, <clears throat> emergency planning committee grants, uh, government safety, redevelopment assistance programs, rural community fire, rural service block, search and rescue, small equipment, volunteer fire assistance. There are so many categories that I find most agencies don't tap into. And the main reason isn't because you're not capable of finding them. It's there's really no simple system to learn how to play this game. And that's why I teach this game. Um, you know, my outcome is very simple. When people ask me, what do I do? My outcome is to solve the funding problem in the public safety market. So the way I do that is I teach agencies how to play this game. And I teach businesses like Fox Fury how to help you play the game. Because in my personal opinion, 
if Fox Ferry is going to provide you the best quality lighting on the market, they should also have a value add of helping you find the funding sources. And that's where I come in. And that's what I do. I work with you on the funding side while your Fox Fury uh, sales rep is building you out the best lighting package you could possibly use. So I mentioned earlier about the need to build rapport and this I wanna to touch on it as well. And I think I'll keep the slides up here for the next few uh, slides because we're gonna go into a deeper dive here. Every grant, may it be a federal, private or state grant has a point of contact. And their responsibility is to answer any questions about the process of applying for the grant, reviewing the grant and approving it, and then getting a check cut for that approved grant. That's what every point of contact is designed to do. Now, why is this point of contact important? Their responsibility is to spend this money on allocated funds on viable sound projects. There is a myth in this industry. And the myth is there's no grant money. There is a ton of grant money. This year alone, I'm estimating in 2021, there's gonna be over $13 billion of grant money available. And the, the linchpin or the key to getting this grant is simple. You need to show how your project is sound and viable. The, you know, they need to understand the grant and, your, and, and the mission. So your job is to make sure that grantor understands your mission, that the grant spells it out. And their job is to help you, the grantee, with any questions and any needs. And establishing rapport is essential. You know, one of the things that I, I when I talk to uh, people that have applied for grants in the past, very few of them have ever called the grantor. And I ask them why, and they, and typically they, the answer is either I didn't know I could, <clears throat> or I didn't know what to say to them. I'm a big believer you need to build rapport with the grantor because if the grantor recognizes this project through your eyes, they're gonna understand it better. And the POC is there to make sure the applicant is successful in getting the funding. So you should talk to them, ask them questions about the process, explain what you're looking to accomplish, build that rapport with them. Because in life, when people feel they're like one another, they will like each other. And the better they understand that the project's not from the San Diego Fire Department, but the project is Lieutenant Johnson from the San Diego Fire Department, it has totally two different meanings. So one of the things that I do with you is I give you a script of what to ask, what to say, and what information you want to get from that grantor when you have that conversation. Because when you talk to them, the better they understand the project and the better you understand what you need to do to get funded, the odds go up you're going to get the funding. So let's talk about the components of a successful grant justification paper. First thing is this, let's define it. A grant justification paper is an affirmative case that addresses the problem and shows how your project's gonna solve it. And the components are this. One, you need to identify the problem. So what is the problem going on in your community? The second thing is you need to quantify it. So ways to quantify it. How many square miles is your community that you serve? What's the population of your community? What's the population of your community during the workday? What highways, what state roads go through your community? Uh, what railroads? Do you have a bus uh, system in your community? Um, what kind of office does you have in your ability? Do you have manufacturing in your community? Do you have uh, manufacturing of food? Or is it a refinery or a petrochemical or a plastics or a resin? What are specifically is in your community that might be considered a soft target? Do you have a water treatment facility? Do you have a sewer treatment facility? Things like that. You need to quantify that problem. Third thing, show how that project is gonna save time, save money, reduce liability and save lives. 
Now, this is where you want it. Make sure you understand that. And I'm sure most of you, when you look at a project, those are the things that are going on in your head anyways. I would also ask the manufacturer, tell me how your projects, tell me how your products save me time, save me money, reduce liability, save lives. One of the things that I've done is I built out a template and outline and we go into details of how Fox Fury lighting is going to save you time how it's gonna save you money, how it's gonna reduce liability and how it's gonna save lives. So that way, when you write your justification paper, you'll have samples and examples of what to say and how to say it. You don't copy this stuff verbatim. This is designed to be as a guide and as inspiration to make it easier for you to put together that compelling case. Then from there, show how you're gonna get this project off the ground from day one to one year. How are you going to get this project started? How are you going to get it implemented in your community? So day one, you get the funding. Day, day 30, you cut the PO. Day 60, you take the products in-house. Day 90, you get trained on it. Day 120, you leverage the media and let them know that you have this project solved, that you bought this equipment. And this is why you have bought this equipment. And this is what the equipment ended up costing the agency and it was paid for by a grant. So it ended up costing you nothing. You want them, and then you wanna notify the community, let the community know what you're doing to better protect and serve them. Um, and, and this is all part of your implementation process. Any grantor that's gonna fund a project wants to see a proper implementation period from one, day one to one year. And then last but not least cost, specific dollar amount. You don't wanna ballpark it. So if you, you're going to work on a grant for a Fox Fury product, you need to have a current quote. So you're going to want to reach out to your rep and get that quote from them because you need this to be the, the specific penny of what this project's going to cost to get funded. So last but not least is, is securing and protecting awarded grant funding. And what is your role? First off, why is securing and protecting grant funding important and necessary? What I've learned over the years is in the multiple parts of an agency have needs and they all and they have projects. And end users are going to do what they can to get this project funded. So a lot of times I'll hear of situations from the sales side where an end user will be working on a project, they'll get it funded, and then they'll find out they lost their funding. And what I learn is the funding's not lost, it just doesn't disappear it gets moved from project A to project B. I've had times where the end user called me up out of the blue and said, I need an updated quote, Michael, because I got $30,000 It just dropped in my lap, but I got to spend it by the end of the week. So we got to get them an updated quote. So I find it happens on both sides of the house. And typically funding is lost for one of three reasons. One, it's the money's not spent quick enough. Someone else at the agency was more persuasive or there wasn't enough leverage with the leadership at the agency to keep the money. So the outcome is to reduce this from happening. So my goal is this, not to just hunt for new money, but how to protect or find old money. So what do you do to protect money and secure it? The first thing I tell end users to do is this, build an agency team that supports the project. So you might be in one part of the department but a lot of times there might be other parts of the department that could use that same solution as well, especially when it comes to lighting. So I would say if you, the more people you can get on your side at the department, the better chance you're going to be of keeping that money. From there, make sure your leadership's on board. So make sure the chief or the deputy chief or the captain or the commander of the division is going to support the project and make sure they're on board and make sure they see the value of getting this lighting. Then from there, you might want to get elected officials on board. So, you know, go to city council, talk to the city council members, tell them what you're looking to accomplish and why you're looking to accomplish it and how it's going to save the community time or save money or reduce liability or save lives. From there, get local businesses on board. Uh, you might want to talk to the local businesses in your community when you have time about the project, um, you know, and tell them what you're looking to do why you're looking to do it. Because you know a couple things are gonna happen. One, 
they're going to, they might want to support you and say, Oh, you know what? I'll go talk to city council to make sure that money doesn't get moved from this project or make sure this, this stay, this gets funded because this is a good idea. You might find that the local business might write you a check. I've seen before uh, working with agencies on grants that the local community ended up raising the money themselves by talking to businesses and they end up paying for the project. So it doesn't hurt to talk to your local businesses in your community. They will fund projects as long as they seem sound and viable. And if you build out your grant justification, like I mentioned earlier, it will be sound and viable. From there, get your community leaders behind projects. Maybe it's uh, your local pastors at your churches. Maybe it's your chamber of commerce. <clears throat> Whoever it is, the more community leaders you can get supporting the project, they're going to go speak to the city council as well. They're going to also go speak to businesses. Get a team together. And then lastly, get your citizens. We all live in either, in either subdivisions, live on city blocks, live in townhomes, live in condos, live in apartments. Talk to your neighbors. Tell them about what you're looking to do. Get them behind the project. Get them talking it up as well. And how do you sway hearts and minds? Show how the project's going to save time. Show how it's going to save money. Show how it's going to reduce liability. Show how the project's going to save lives. Also, justification information. May it be NIMS standards. May it be NIOSH or NFPA or NIJ or ANSI. If there's any just of any certifications um, that the that the manufacturer has to get to provide the solution to you, leverage them. Ask them for the help. The end. Fox Fury is here to help you get the pro, get the funding for the project. That's why they hired me. So Fox Fury can help you if you need justification. We can help you with the grant application with the justification paper. We can help you maneuver through this process. That's what we're here for. So speaking of what we can do, here's what we can do. Here's what we can't do. So what we can do, we can build out templates and outlines that are designed to be used as a guide and inspiration for you to fill out your justification paper. We can review your justification paper, make suggestions to increase the success. What I usually do is when you send me your draft, I look at it, I redline it like a legal document. Just look for ways to optimize it to make it better. Then from there, I, you know, I'll, we could review your application and make suggestions on how to increase the success. What we can't do is we can't write it for you. I can't fill out your application. I can't write your justification paper. I am a consultant hired by Fox Fury. That would be collusion, but I can definitely make suggestions, give you advice, share with you things that I've learned over the 20 years of being in this industry, how to be successful in playing this grant game. Um, there was a few years ago where consultants like me were doing that. They were actually filling out applications and writing narratives and justification papers, and they got caught by the federal government. The agency got in trouble, the grant writer got in trouble, and the company that was, that, uh, was providing the solution got in trouble. And I always tell end users this, if you're not willing to fill out an application and write a justification paper, how interested are you in the product? And that's okay if you're not. Here's the beauty of it all. If you don't have time to do it, and I'll give you an example. I was just working with an agency this week and the Lieutenant that I was working with on the project said, listen, I love all this stuff. I think it's great. I don't have time to do this right now. I got so many things going on at the agency. So he was like, you know, I'm gonna have to pass. And I said, okay, well, before we pass, let me ask you a few questions. Is there anybody at the agency that can help out with this? And then I asked him, does anybody have a, a relative, a, a husband, a wife, maybe access to this, a, a school teacher or a local college professor that can help do the legwork on this? Well, we were able to figure out they had a person at the department that was able to help out. He, he was on leave, he just had surgery on his knee. So he's gonna be at, in front of a desk for a while He's our point guy now. So now the lieutenant's in charge. I keep him in the loop and I work with this officer as well. There's always somebody to find that can help out with this. As I always tell agencies and end users, it's never about resources. It's always about resourcefulness. And that's one of the things that I'm here to do. Help think of ways outside the box to get projects funded. 
I get it. This is, you know, you, you wear many hats. You have many responsibilities. Some of you can actually take this on and it won't be too much. The ones that can't, I guarantee you, we could find somebody either at the agency or in your community that would be willing to help out and do the grant work. So if you have any questions, these are the ways to get a hold of me. I recommend first and foremost though, talk to your rep at Fox Fury. So if you have questions about the grant strategy, let them know first and then let's all get together. Um, but if you need to talk to me anytime, my office line is 630-945-3605. My cell phone is 630-877-3130. My email is mazmore at dynamic-international.net. I'm here to help serve for you folks, help you, whatever you need to get this job done. That's exactly what I'm here to do. Um, I appreciate your time and I'm happy to open this up for uh, any questions you might have. So let me look through here and see what questions we have here. All right, Michael, that sounds good. Yeah, it looks like we did get some uh, some questions. Um, Scott wanted to know uh, what administrative costs are expected from Dynamic International to the department on any grant help? Great question. Service is free. Uh, my agreement is with Fox Fury. So they're paying for uh, my company to provide this service. So Scott, for your agency or any agency that's interested in Fox Fury equipment, it's free, doesn't cost you a penny. Cool. And then uh, let's see, Daniel asked, uh, what are the chances of individuals grants, i.e. research, et cetera, no chances of small businesses getting grants for reason testing equipment? Great question. Um, case by case, uh, my area of expertise has always been on helping municipalities get grant money. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience on the business side. However, um, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you, learn more about the project. Worst case, I could probably advise you some places to go. All right. Yeah, and your, most of your work is uh, towards the public safety uh, sector versus the private enterprise. Yes. Yep. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Um, so what, is, what would you say is the, uh, receipt, the success rate of getting grants? Is there a... Great question. Um, and I'm asked this a lot of times by businesses. My answer is this. I've built out a system and I've seen it work. And then I built out the system and I've seen times it didn't work. And I went back and I looked at it and I said, to, and, I, and I asked questions. And what I learned is this. If the end user communicates with me, meaning lets me know exactly what's going on, how they're doing with the grants, how they're doing filling out the application, what's working, what's not working. And they have the communication with me both through email, through phone calls, through Zoom nowadays. I'm talking to people on Zoom, through text message. As long as the communication is flowing, the success rate is almost 100%. It's when I don't, you know, I provide information to the end user and I don't hear back from them. And maybe I don't hear back from them because their plate's full, or maybe they got moved to a different part of the department. Whatever the reason is, if the communication breaks down, that's when we're not successful. So I always tell end users, over communicate with me, I'm gonna over communicate with you. Um, and I explain the relationship I have with your agency and with the end users is this. They're my quarterback, I'm the offensive coordinator. I call plays. The end user executes the plays, and then based on the results of those plays, we call different plays. And we work together until we get the funding. Excellent. Excellent. Um, an interesting question, and I don't know if we can address it here. It might be something that uh, we uh, uh, go offline and answer, but um, he said hey, we need a rescue boat how could we bundle that together with lighting? And is this something you put together or do you do it separately? Um, I would talk to your Fox Fury rep and find out exactly what solutions they have for lighting for boats. Um, you know, if, and then from there, um, we could talk about the project and I could get a better idea on what grants to target because um, there might be certain grants to target better than others, um, you know, some people think, oh, I'll just, I fire a list of grants off, you're good to go. Before I do that, 
I actually look at your community. I look at your county. I look at your city. Um, I also relook at the state, but I determine based on that, what are the best three to five to seven grants to target first? And it's based on the project and it's based on where you live. So it's case by case, but we could figure that out as we go. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and then Josh added a question about um, how do we get a list of grants for lighting in the, for the private sector area? Um, you'd have to reach out to your rep first, make sure we understand what the project is, then, then I would talk to you. And then I'd learn more about what you're looking to accomplish. And there might be some grants on the private side uh, that you could tap into as if you're a private entity. Okay. And then uh, Daniel asked, uh, what are third party grant writers? That would be a grant writer that you hire or someone that writes a grant on your behalf that's not part of your municipality. Good. And uh, Emily had, uh, what percentage of total purchase order needs to include Fox Ferry products? Typically bundle drones with accessories, software, and lighting solutions. Can we still use your service if only a small percentage of the total amount requested is Fox Ferry products? I'm a dealer, not public ent entity. Um, case by case, the first step is to talk to the uh, rep at Fox Ferry. Um, then we'll probably have a conversation amongst the three of us. Okay. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Um, starting to uh, get close to the uh, top of the hour. So we'll, we can wrap it up here. Um, I guess there's only one other thing that I uh, noticed that uh, in meetings we had before is that you really stress the importance of need over want. Um, you know, with the department, that really made a big difference on how they acted and what their success rate of getting the grant was. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I always tell, I always ask um, when I talk to the agency and talk to the point of contact, um, and the question I ask simply is this, is this a want or is this a must? And the reason I ask that question is, in hu it's human nature to want things, unless it's a must, it usually doesn't happen. So I always like to find out if it's a want or if it's a must. And if it's a want, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Then I'll ask what has to happen for it to be a must. And a lot of times I find when I talk to agencies is the solutions they want are musts, but they're so used to being told no that they're not sure it's gonna happen. And I always explain to any end user I talk to on the phone is if you're willing to put in the time and you're willing to keep me in the loop and communicate with me, we'll find the funding because it's out there. And I, I've seen way too many examples of it through my research and through doing this as a consultant. And when I started doing this originally as a salesperson, the funding's out there. It's just a matter of, are you willing to do the work to get it? And, you know, it's free money, you know, technically it's not going to cost your agency any money, but I also, I realize it's not free in terms of time. And it'll take typically your first grant. I always tell end users four to six to hours of time on target. And sometimes I'll get the response four to six hours. That's a lot of time. My reply is this, do a little bit each day, do 15 minutes each day. If you do 15 minutes each day in about two, three weeks, you'll have enough put together to apply for a grant. And that's the first one. The next grant, the time gets cut in half because you could take a lot of what you put in the first grant, reconfigure it for the second grant. So you're not reinventing the wheel. My belief is make this as simple and as smooth as possible. Uh, and don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, there's no reason to do it. So you can use what you use the first time for the second time. And then the third time, um, so as you do more grants, it's going to eat up less and less time. So to me, realize that we're here to help you or I'm here to support you. I'm here to, to work with you side by side. You're not in this alone. I know you didn't become a fireman or a cop to write grants for a living. I've never met a cop or a fireman that became a grant writer be, or became a cop or fireman to write grants. I know this is something that's, that's some, for some of you, it's outside your comfort zone. I get it. I'm here to, I built this system to make it simple for you that you could plug into so you don't feel that overwhelm. And that's why I'm here to do. That's awesome. Cool. That is great information, Michael. Thank you. 
And um, if anyone wants to get more information, like I said, we're recording this and we will send out this recording uh, out to everyone who uh, registered. And uh, there'll be information on how to contact Fox Ferry for, or Michael to get more information and get the, pro the process started. So um, we're excited to be working with you, Michael, and hope that we can get uh, more tools and more people's uh, hands so that they can do their jobs a little bit easier and better. So Absolutely. thank you for your time today. I, I'm honored to be a part of the team. Uh, I, I, I love the products. I love the company. I think you guys are great. Um, I also want to offer up if anybody wants to take a deeper dive into this grant information, I am also doing a free training on Friday. You're more than welcome to attend. Um, if you're interested in attending, just text me, 630-877-3130. You're more than welcome to attend. It's a two-hour class, so it goes a lot deeper than what I cover now, but it's free. And I do free classes all the time. Uh, the best way you can also find me is on LinkedIn. If, you go, if you're on LinkedIn, send me an invite to connect, and I'll make sure I always keep you in the loop. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for the information, and uh, yeah. Look forward to working with you more and uh, getting some people some tools. Sounds good. Thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great afternoon. All right. You too.